Hi everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Ross's Corner here on Old Mutual 2 Oceans Marathon TV. Today we're going to be looking at a controversial subject of running technique. I'm going to simplify this for you by looking at only three aspects of technique. The first of those is the foot strike, how your foot should hit the ground. The second one will be body alignment during running. And the third will be the position of the head and the arms. I would never ever suggest that you make wholesale changes to your technique. That can be really dangerous and it's what a lot of people have suggested when they've advocated things like pose and chi running. What you should be doing is making small incremental changes to your running technique and I'm going to show you some of those because they can lead you into being a more effective, economical, efficient, faster and less injury prone runner. So we start with number one and that's the foot strike. And I'll show you using slow motion video what the options are for how your foot hits the ground and I'll explain to you some of the pitfalls that often will lead to injury and then give you some kind of recommendation about it. Let's have a look at the foot strike now. So the first and most common way for the foot to strike the ground is heel first followed by the toe off. And compare this to the midfoot strike where the ball of the foot and the heel make contact with the ground more or less at the same time. And then the third way for the foot to hit the ground is forefoot first and sometimes the heel doesn't even touch the ground or it can touch after the ball of the foot. The important point that I want to make about this is despite the fact that there's a lot of debate in scientific and coaching circles, there's probably not one that is better than the others. And the most important thing is that if you force yourself to change it, you could predispose yourself to injury, especially if you shift from a heel strike to a mid or forefoot strike. What is more important is where the foot hits the ground in relation to the sense of mass. So if you look at this clip here, have a look at me deliberately overreaching and extending my leg out in front of me and you'll see that I make contact with the ground quite far ahead of my hips which is where the center of mass is. Now compare this clip to the following one where I've pulled the landing back towards me by not reaching out and you'll see that my shin is vertical and that's what you need to aim for. Lean forward and don't reach for the landing. Aspect number two of running technique is alignment or the position of the body while you run. And the reason we're worried about this is because we can take advantage of gravity, and I know this is tongue in cheek, but if you get it right, it'll feel like all your runs are downhill all the time. Let's have a look at body alignment. So it's important that the shoulders, hips, knee, and ankle remain in a straight vertical line in order to optimize body position. It's from this position that you can lean forward from the ankles and then let gravity pull you forwards, and that's really what you want to take advantage of. The mistake people make is they lean at the shoulders. Now keep an eye on my hips. And you'll see that if I lean at the shoulders, my hips actually go backwards. And now that's what you don't want to have happen because your hips and your sense of mass have now been pushed behind you and you're in no position to go forward. And that's a common mistake, especially when people run up hills. So again, just to repeat, you want to be able to lean from the ankles. Visualize yourself as a tree blowing in the wind, leaning from the ground upwards, and then you'll be able to harness gravity to move you forward. The other common mistake is to put the chest out too much. And that again pushes the hips backwards and these people tend to float and lose too much energy in the air. Again, keep the shoulders forward, hips forward and the knees and ankles and you'll be in the position to use gravity. The final pointer that I have for you on running technique is the position of the head and the arms and how they move during running. This is a really small but really important aspect of running technique and I'll give you some advice on exactly what you should look for and how you should think about your arms and your head while you run. So the arm should be bent at 90 degrees at the elbow and the movement is from the top of the shoulder down to the hem of the shorts. There's no need to go beyond this. This is a sprinting motion and tends to cause floating or overstriding. So it's a nice compact swing of the arms. The first mistake people tend to make is to go with straight arms, tin soldier, and the second is to suffocate themselves. If you look at it from the front, the most important point is the midline of the body. You don't want to rotate so much that you actually tend to swing yourself across that midline and you don't want to under rotate where you run again like a tin soldier. It's important to remember that we do rotate the shoulders around the hips so that if you move the arms back and forth the movement is actually diagonally across the body. If we demonstrate this in running you'll see that my arms or hands don't cross the midline of the body they move back and forth nice and relaxed just jockeying the legs. So that's three really simple technique tips that you can use. As I said at the outset, there's no instruction manual and there's no have to do when it comes to technique. Think about, for example, Paula Radcliffe who runs like she's looking for mosquitoes. And Gabriel Selassie, for example, runs with his arm out to the side and they're world record holders. 
So don't make radical changes. Rather look at what I've introduced you today, make small changes to technique, and hopefully you'll start to feel the difference, and then eventually that difference will become a habit. Next time, we're going to have a look at diets, and I'm going to interview a dietitian about some foods you should be eating for your training. So do join us then. Until then, happy training.